If you were ever a fan of Gunsmoke, you certainly cannot ignore the character Marshall Matt Dillon, played by James Arness. Critically acclaimed, James became an integral figure in the film, reaping numerous accolades over a five-decade career. Despite his triumphs, the enigmatic behind-the-scenes tales of Gunsmoke have often bewildered audiences. Strikingly, these rumors remain elusive to everyone but James Arness's children. Now, twelve years after James Arness's passing, his children have chosen to unveil the untold truth about their father. What are you waiting for? Let's get started. James Arness, born on May 26, 1923, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, had a life marked by both triumph and tragedy. His father, Rolf Arness, was a businessman, and his mother, Ruth Duisler, a journalist. James grew up with a younger brother, Peter Arness, who later became a renowned television actor known by the stage name Peter Graves for his role in the series Mission Impossible. James's journey took an unexpected turn during World War II. Despite harboring dreams of becoming a pilot, his poor eyesight and towering height of 6.7 made flying an impractical pursuit. Instead, he was drafted into the United States Army, serving as a rifleman. His notable contribution came during the Battle of Anzio, a historic conflict, where he suffered a severe leg injury, leading to his evacuation back to Iowa. While recuperating in Iowa, James formed a bond with a nurse who astutely noted that his voice was well-suited for radio. Inspired by her suggestion, he decided to pursue a career in radio announcing. After completing his recovery, James enrolled in college in Wisconsin, aiming to hone his skills. In 1945, he secured a position at a local radio station in Minneapolis, where his passion for entertaining people flourished. Despite finding success in radio, James hungered for more. Fueled by ambition, he hitchhiked his way to Hollywood, driven by the desire to make a mark in the world of film and television. Little did he know that this decision would shape the course of his life. In Hollywood, James Arness faced the challenges of the entertainment industry, yet he persevered. His talent and dedication did not go unnoticed, and he eventually found himself on the path to stardom. Besides, James Arness faced a paradoxical journey where what initially seemed like a hindrance turned into a boon. His towering height of 6'7 thwarted his aspirations of becoming a pilot during World War II, but in the realm of Hollywood, it became his ticket to fame. In the vast landscape of Hollywood, James's exceptional height set him apart, opening doors to roles that demanded an imposing presence. This unique physical attribute became his calling card, and soon he found himself cast in roles that capitalized on his commanding stature. His niche, it seemed, lay in westerns, where the towering figure of James Arness found a natural fit. The turning point in James's career came with the CBS western series Gunsmoke, where he assumed the iconic role of Marshal Matt Dillon. The show, originally based on a radio program, needed a face to match the authoritative voice that had already become synonymous with the character. Producers scoured the industry for the perfect fit, initially setting their sights on none other than John Wayne, a legend in the Western genre. However, fate had different plans. John Wayne, for whatever reason, was not available or inclined to take on the role. In a fortuitous twist, the legendary actor suggested James Arness as the ideal replacement. This recommendation catapulted James into the spotlight, securing him the lead role in Gunsmoke, and forever altering the trajectory of his career. James Arness's career, which commenced in 1947, unfolded as a tale of both triumph and tragedy. Initially cast in a minor role in the film The Farmer's Daughter, James quickly ascended to prominence in the 1950s, earning notable parts in science fiction classics like The Thing from Another World and Them. During this period, he forged a lasting collaboration with the legendary John Wayne, working alongside him for years and featuring in films such as Hondo and Big Jim McLean.
The turning point arrived when John Wayne, recognizing James's talent, recommended him for the lead role in the television adaptation of Gunsmoke. This marked the beginning of a two-decade-long journey for James as Marshal Matt Dillon, the iconic character in the long-running series that aired from 1955 to 1975. Gunsmoke became James Arness's magnum opus, defining his career and solidifying his status as a television legend. While Gunsmoke concluded in 1975, James's career did not wane. He ventured into another lead role in the 1976 series, How the West Was Won, based on the 1962 film of the same name, which spanned three seasons before concluding in 1979. However, the 1980s presented a challenging transition for James as he took on the titular character in the detective series, McLean's Law. Unfortunately, the show lasted only one season, falling short of the successful departure from the Western genre that James had hoped for. Amidst this setback, James found solace in returning to his Western roots. He reprised his role as Marshal Matt Dillon in five made-for-television Gunsmoke movies, filmed between 1987 and 1993. Despite the brief hiccup in the 1980s, James Arness's resilience and commitment to his craft ensured a poignant comeback to the genre that had defined much of his career. Some things you might not know about James in Gunsmoke. The behind-the-scenes challenges of Gunsmoke were not limited to the fictional world portrayed on screen. They extended to the physical struggles of its star, James Arness. While his co-star, Chester, intentionally incorporated a noticeable hobble into his character for added realism, Arness faced a different, more personal battle. James Arness, a veteran who had served in World War II, returned with injuries that manifested in a noticeable difficulty in walking. This wasn't a scripted choice for added authenticity, but a real-life challenge stemming from the actor's wartime experiences. The impact of Arness's injuries resonated not only in his private life, but also on the set of Gunsmoke, where his character, Marshal Matt Dillon, often needed to be on his feet for extended periods or navigate long distances. The production of the series encountered hurdles, especially during episodes that demanded Arness's physical presence and mobility. Walking scenes, in particular, posed a significant challenge. To accommodate Arness's unique medical needs, the production team strategically scheduled such scenes early in the day. This allowed the actor the flexibility to take multiple breaks between action and cut, ensuring he could manage the physical demands of his role. The mounting of horses, a staple in westerns, proved to be another formidable challenge for Arness, especially as the series progressed and he aged. The longevity of Gunsmoke, spanning 20 seasons, exacerbated the difficulties associated with these physically demanding aspects of the role. Arness's commitment to his craft persisted despite these obstacles, a testament to his professionalism and dedication to bringing Marshall Dillon to life. In addition, the behind-the-scenes dynamics of television productions are often veiled in mystery, but occasionally, conflicts between co-stars come to light. In the case of Gunsmoke, a significant rift existed between Milburn Stone, who played Doc Adams, and the series star, James Arness. Their strained relationship, initially fueled by professional clashes and a clash of personalities, stands as a tragic subplot within the larger narrative of the iconic Western series. Stone candidly admitted to harboring animosity towards Arness during the first three years of the show. In an interview with TV Guide, he expressed his frustration with Arness's unprofessionalism and attitude. Arness's tardiness and playful behavior on set irked Stone to the point of developing a genuine dislike for his co-star. Stone believed they were diametrically opposed and even questioned Arness's suitability for the entertainment industry. The breaking point arrived when Stone, fed up with Arness's behavior, issued an ultimatum. Stone confronted Arness about his antics on set, making it clear that he would not tolerate any more unprofessionalism. 
Stone recalled the decisive moment, saying, I said, I've read my contract and there's nothing in it that says, I have to put diapers on you or wait for you. And if you ever show up late again, buddy, you'll have two things to explain, not only where you were, but where I went. In a surprising turn of events, Arnis responded with humility and acknowledgement. Stone recounted that Arnis looked him in the eye and admitted, you're absolutely right. This pivotal moment became the catalyst for a transformation in their relationship. Stone's perception of Arnes shifted, and he began to see the actor in a new light, describing him as a great, big, wonderful cub bear. Besides, the collaboration between James Arnes and John Wayne, two towering figures in the realm of westerns, was not without its share of drama and tragedy. Despite their history of working together on notable projects like Big Jim McLean, Hondo, Island in the Sky, and The Sea Chase, a profound rift marred their relationship, casting a shadow over their professional partnership. The turning point in their association occurred when John Wayne, a significant influence in Arness's pursuit of the role of Matt Dillon in Gunsmoke, invited him to be part of his passion project, The Alamo. However, the trajectory of their friendship took a tragic turn when Arness failed to attend a crucial meeting related to the film. Wayne, deeply invested in The Alamo as his passion project, took offense at Arness's absence. The failure to show up for the meeting reportedly became a catalyst for a significant rift between the two actors. This fracture in their friendship proved to be irreparable, marking the tragic end of a professional collaboration that had spanned several successful ventures. The aftermath of this feud extended beyond personal differences, leading to a notable absence of collaboration between Arnes and Wayne in subsequent movie projects. The missed opportunity to continue their on-screen partnership stands as a poignant reminder of the fragility of relationships in the cutthroat world of Hollywood. James Arnes's persona off-screen was shrouded in a veil of privacy, creating an air of mystery around the actor that fueled the rumor mill both in the 1950s and beyond. While his name has been linked to various rumored feuds on the set of Gunsmoke, it becomes evident that the actor's demeanor was marked by an intensely private nature. In a 1973 report by the Tallahassee Democrat, James Arness was characterized as one of the most private men in Hollywood. This sentiment was echoed by many of his co-stars, underscoring the enigmatic aura that surrounded the actor during his time in the entertainment industry. Amanda Blake, who portrayed Miss Kitty on Gunsmoke, acknowledged that she didn't know much about Arness personally, but emphasized that he was fun to work with. The limited insight into Arness's personal life added to the intrigue surrounding the actor, leaving co-stars and the public alike to speculate about the man behind the iconic roles. Ken Curtis, known for his role as Festus, had nothing but praise for Arness, describing him as terrific to work with. Despite the rumors circulating about Arness's supposed feuds, the testimonials from those who shared the screen with him reveal a different side of the actor. His professionalism and amiable nature on set, as attested by co-stars like Amanda Blake and Ken Curtis, paint a picture of an actor who, despite his private disposition, left a positive impact on those around him. In a reflective interview with Signal in 2006, James Arnes delved into the profound impact and enduring success of Gunsmoke, shedding light on the distinctive qualities that set it apart in the realm of Western storytelling. The genre, once dominated by the likes of movie star John Wayne and later Clint Eastwood, had experienced shifts over the years. Yet Gunsmoke emerged as a standout, transcending its counterparts. While numerous Western television shows graced the small screen, none quite captured the enchantment and resonance that Matt Dillon and Dodge City brought to audiences. Signal probed Arness on the elusive magic that made Gunsmoke so successful, prompting the actor to reflect on the show's unique identity. In response, Arness distinguished Gunsmoke from its predecessors, asserting that it stood as an adult Western, 
differentiating itself from the more lighthearted and perhaps simplistic fun time, westerns of the past. Arnis delved into the core of the show's success, attributing it to the distinctive premise and storytelling approach. Unlike the typical westerns of the time, Gunsmoke ventured into the realm of real-life narratives, exploring the complexities of authentic characters and weaving stories that beckoned audience involvement. The tragic undertone lies in the nuanced recognition that, despite the genre's popularity, Gunsmoke stood apart not by conforming to the familiar tropes of its counterparts, but by embracing a more mature and realistic storytelling style. James Arnes's later years were marked by a poignant retirement from acting, officially concluding with his role in the fifth Gunsmoke film. Following this farewell, the public's connection with James became sparse, with only a 2001 autobiography offering glimpses into his life. The once prominent actor seemed to withdraw from the limelight, leading a quiet existence until his passing in 2011. In the aftermath of his retirement, James retreated from the public eye, leaving a void in the hearts of those who had admired his work for decades. The limited information available about his life post-retirement adds a layer of mystery to his narrative, intensifying the tragedy of a celebrated actor slipping into relative obscurity. Despite the subdued nature of his later years, a touching aspect of James Arness's legacy emerges in his relationship with his most iconic work, Gunsmoke. Unlike many actors who find it challenging to watch their own performances, James exhibited a unique connection to the series. Legend has it that during his twilight years, he would routinely tune in to reruns of Gunsmoke and revel in the craftsmanship and writing that had shaped the show's legacy. In these moments, he found solace and pride in the artistic achievements of the series, viewing it not merely as a Western, but as a profound character study. James Arness's deep respect for the show reflected in his words emphasizing that Gunsmoke transcended its genre, resonating as a timeless character study. This perspective offers a poignant reflection on the enduring impact of the series and the artistic depth that had captivated audiences over the years. Following his retirement in 1993, James Arness entered a phase of life characterized by tranquility until his passing in 2011. The veteran actor, whose career had left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry, succumbed to natural causes at the age of 88. The news of his death marked the end of an era, leaving behind a void that resonated with those who had followed his illustrious career. At the time of his demise, James Arness left a financial legacy with an estimated net worth of $8 million. This substantial wealth became an inheritance for his surviving family members, offering a sense of financial security even as they grappled with the loss of a beloved patriarch. James's personal life unfolded as a poignant chapter in his story. He had been married twice, and his first marriage was to Virginia Chapman, a fellow thespian whom he encountered while studying at the Pasadena Playhouse. Their union in 1948 marked the beginning of a family, with the couple welcoming two children, a daughter named Jenny and a son named Rolf. In a testament to James's commitment to family, he also adopted Virginia's son, Craig, from her previous marriage, solidifying their bonds. The saga of James Arnes's personal life unfolded against a backdrop of joy and despair, with the dissolution of his first marriage to Virginia Chapman marking the onset of heartbreak. The couple, whose union began in 1948, weathered a tumultuous journey that ultimately led to their divorce in 1960. The cracks in their relationship had deepened over the years, exacerbated by Virginia's struggles with mental health. The darkest chapter in their marital story emerged in 1959 when Virginia attempted suicide, a desperate act that repeated itself the following year. Faced with the unraveling of their marriage, James filed for divorce and embarked on a harrowing legal battle to secure custody of their three children. In a triumph amid adversity, James emerged victorious in court, gaining custody of all three, Jenny, Rolf, 
and Craig. However, the familial troubles persisted. Despite the initial semblance of stability, tragedy struck in 1975 when Jenny, one of James and Virginia's children, succumbed to what was believed to be a deliberate drug overdose or suicide. This heart-wrenching loss plunged the family into grief once again. Adding to the sorrow, Virginia, who had previously attempted suicide twice before, made a final tragic attempt two years later, bringing an end to her troubled life. While the specter of loss loomed over the Arness family, there were glimmers of hope. James's two surviving children, Rolf and Craig, managed to navigate through the darkness and find solace in happier lives. James, despite the immense challenges and heartbreak, eventually found a new chapter of love. In 1965, he entered into a romance with actress Thordis Brandt. Although the couple never formalized their relationship through marriage, they remained committed to each other until 1972. The latter part of James Arness's life unfolded with a mixture of personal contentment and a continued commitment to family, though not without its share of complexities and tragedy. Following his separation from Thordis Brandt, James encountered his second wife, Janet Surtees. In 1978, they exchanged vows, embarking on a marital journey that would endure until James's death many decades later. Despite the longevity of their union, Janet remained a figure shrouded in mystery, a deliberate choice that seemed to align with James's preference for privacy. In the realm of family, James's son Rolf emerged as a surfing legend, carving a niche for himself in the world of waves. Named after his grandfather, Rolf's journey to becoming the world surfing champion in 1970 bore the imprint of his father's influence. James, ever the thoughtful parent, had introduced Rolf to surfing as a means of rehabilitation after a skull fracture. The sport became not only a form of physical therapy, but also a lifelong passion for Rolf. On a divergent path, Craig, the adopted sibling, pursued a career in photography. His professional journey took him to the esteemed pages of National Geographic before he ventured into entrepreneurship, founding a notable stock photography agency. Both Rolf and Craig chose trajectories far removed from the spotlight that had defined their father's life. James, intent on shielding his children from the pressures of fame, believed that their happiness lay in more traditional careers. As James Arness faced his final years, his family remained at the forefront of his thoughts and affections. In a poignant letter penned before his death, intended to be read posthumously, James expressed profound love for his wife and two surviving children. The missive serves as a testament to the enduring importance of family in James's life and underscores the depth of his paternal devotion. James's passing in 2011 left a void in the lives of his wife and children, and the sentiment of loss reverberated beyond the public eye. The narrative of his later years is one of familial bonds, individual pursuits, and the delicate balance between public and private life that James Arness navigated until the end. Despite his passing, James remains an enduring figure in the hearts of many, with his legacy and chorid in the iconic Western series Gunsmokey. The show, which spanned two decades, stands as a testament to James's indelible mark on the entertainment landscape. Gunsmoke holds the distinction of being one of the most revered Western television shows in history, boasting a record as the longest-running program within the genre. While Westerns may have lost some popularity in the broader cultural landscape after the peak of Gunsmoke, the show's timeless appeal endures. A devoted fan base continues to cherish the series, ensuring its longevity through various releases on home media. Furthermore, the spirit of Gunsmoke lives on through sporadic syndication on both cable channels and basic television. Introducing new generations to the rugged tales of Marshal Matt Dillon and the lawless landscapes of the Old West. The hope lingers that one day, the Western genre may experience a resurgence in popularity, ushering in an era where classics like Gunsmoke might see a modern reboot.
The cyclical nature of trends in entertainment leaves the door open for the return of Westerns. And should that day come, Gunsmoke stands poised to reclaim its place in the spotlight. What do you think about the life and behind-the-scenes secrets of James Arness's Gunsmoke? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.